Cybercrime threats, hacking, phishing, scamming, bots and employee actions causing vulnerabilities. Now, there are a range of cybercrime threats that may be employed by malicious entities to attack the integrity of a system or gain access to their data. And what we're gonna take a look at in this video is introduce you to some of these threats. And these threats can be quite dynamic, but we'll just give a bit of an overview of what these categories are. So the first one is that of hacking, probably the most well-known one, which involves individuals seeking to gain unauthorized access either to a system, a network, or its specific data. Hacking is carried out by individuals or groups in order to steal sensitive information, disrupt services so people can't actually work on the systems, or exploit systems for other malicious intents, which might be things such as ransomware. They take over control of the system and then people can't use it and they charge them a ransom in order for them to gain access to the system again. But obviously, it's someone essentially trying to get into a system they should not be in. So they need to like steal credentials or find a way into the system through some sort of loophole to gain that unauthorized access. And then once in, they cause some trouble. The next area is that of phishing and its subcategory of smishing, where attackers impersonate legitimate organizations via email or other communications channels to trick individuals into providing sensitive information, such as their passwords or credit card numbers. So what this may look like is you receive an email from what looks like is your bank, and that email has a link in it, and it usually has something that makes you panic in that email, such as there's been an issue with your account, or it seems to be there's a problem with your password password and it encourages you to click on that link and once you click on that link it takes you to an impersonation website a fake website trying to replicate your bank in this scenario okay or any other type of fake website for another type of organization which you might have an account for when on the website it's going to encourage you to enter your login details or some sort of personal information or financial information once you do that pretty much you've just given the actual hacker your information and then they know that data, they know either your login details or your financial data, and then they're gonna use it for your actual legitimate bank or other organization that you're assigned to. So that is what phishing involves. They pretend to be a legitimate organization. They send out emails using the form of spam, okay, to a whole thousands of people to see who's gonna get tricked by it. That's where the term phishing kind of comes from. It's like phishing, they send out the bait and then they see who bites at it. And then yeah, they get that data and they use it for malicious intent, sending people to that phase website where they enter in their details and gives it straight to them. Now, smishing is a subcategory of this, and pretty much it's the same idea, just now we're using fraudulent SMS messages, which got a real boom a few years ago. Okay, when you get an SMS message and it says, oh, there's an issue with your toll account, or your email account, or your bank account, but it's sent directly to your phone, it comes up as an SMS message, still containing a link within that message, you click on the link, you enter your data into that fake website, bang, they've got your info once again. So that's phishing and smishing. The third category is of scamming, and scamming's been around forever. It's just that now technology gives us new ways of scamming, all right? And phishing is one of the ways of scamming. But it involves using technologies in order to defraud individuals or organizations. So you're kind of putting them in a predicament. Scammers use deceitful tactics to trick victims into sending their money, all right, sharing personal information or engaging actions that benefit the scammer. So in some cases, it might just be, oh, there's a virus on your computer and they've contacted you via phone telling you this, but there is no virus on your computer. But they tell you this and then they say, oh, buy this software off us or we'll help you get rid of that virus. And then you send your money to them but there was never a virus to begin with. They've kind of put the thing on your computer that's made you panic, they've sent it to you via email, but you paid them for a legitimate service. And that's very hard then to chase up because you actually did pay them for a service, but they've scammed you. They put you in a situation where you believe there was something wrong. And so that's what scamming does. It's there to trick individuals. In many ways, they try to prey, I think, on the elderly and, uh, categories of people who they don't believe have a good understanding of how computing technology works. They make them panic and they trick them into purchasing something that they probably don't own. And then building upon that, if they did pay or offer credit card details in order to do this payment, they've given that to the scammer who then may use it for further fraud and further issues. 
The third area is one that is growing, especially with AI, and that are bots and botnets, which is automated software applications that perform repetitive tasks on the internet. So it makes things happen over and over and essentially causes systems to crash. So malicious bots can be used for spamming, so sending out lots of messages or opening uh, files lots of times, so over and over and over again, or launching distributed denial of services attacks, DDoS attacks, which has brought down some major companies in big cyber attacks and brings their whole organization to a halt. All right. And they can also do the automatic spreading of malware as well, where they infect other systems and then those systems become affected and then they spread it too, which also supports a DDoS attack as well. Okay, so now when we're doing that, we then go into the botnet category, where botnets are networks of compromised computers. So the bots, so multiple computers now that have been compromised, and they're all controlled by a specific attacker. All right, and once again, then it can be used for those same purposes, spamming, DDoS attacks, and bringing down an actual system or network. But the whole thing with bots and botnets is while there's an attacker controlling it, it is the systems are becoming compromised and spreading malicious software and causing trouble, turning a network almost against itself. So very troublesome there. And as you can see, it's not just the bot, the individual bot itself that's infecting networks or causing trouble or writing troll messages on social media. No, it can spread to other systems and then we have multiple and then it can really bring down an enterprise's whole structure. The final category is people themselves, employee actions. And we say either intentionally or accidentally. Sometimes people just don't know what they're doing or they're naive and they're not updating their passwords. They're clicking on phishing scams and giving data away. When they do that, they're leaving an opening for a network to be attacked. So we really need to make sure we train our employees in security measures and known cyber threats. But these instances can also be intentional. Disgruntled employees who are not happy, who leak information, and that allows for scammers and people uh, such as hackers to pick up on this data and then attack a network. So obviously from the unintentional side, there needs to be training in areas such as letting people know about keeping their passwords up to date, what sustains a weak password and what makes up a strong password, using combinations of characters, of symbols, letters, uh, and uh, numbers, and using them in different ways and change them every three to six months as well as known phishing scams and know what a phishing email kind of looks like, poor spelling, read the email address that it came from, does it look authentic? We need to train employees in this area so they don't make these mistakes and leave these openings as well, giving out information to these unauthorized external entities. All right, and also that we on top of our employees to mapping accounts, letting people know we know what you're doing. That's why these things are in place you know, if, within organizations, because a disgruntled employee can make these mistakes or do it on purpose, leading to trouble for an entire enterprise. And once again, leave an opening for one of these other methods to essentially take the system down. So I hope this video has given you a good introduction into a variety of different types of cyber crime threats. Hacking involving an individual or group trying to get unauthorized access to a network in order to cause trouble. Phishing and smishing, which aims to pretend to be a legitimate organization, sending out either emails or SMS messages, pretending to be those organizations with links that take people to fake websites where they give their real information to the hacker on the other side of that fake website. Scamming, where individuals are tricked into giving their personal details by an entity and sometimes tricked by making them panic and making them feel like the person is actually doing a legitimate service, when in reality they're taking their personal information. Bots and botnets, where the software is actually attacking a system, spreading malicious software to other systems, and then causing issues such as spam and DDoS and spreading malware to bring potentially entire networks down. And then employee actions, individuals either intentionally or accidentally making mistakes, leaking data, giving away passwords, um, or uh, falling for phishing scams, leaving openings for malicious entities to enter a network and cause some trouble.